So the second part will talk about autoencoders. Here is a list of regularized autoencoders. We will concentrate on two different types, the denoising autoencoder and the variational autoencoder. So let's first talk about the denoising autoencoder. So in order to avoid the identity, we could, for example, corrupt the original image. Right? So we can actually add some noise. We can just add Gaussian noise, or we could add salt noise where we have a mask. This is this M. So we multiply element-wise on the input, a binary mask, so we remove pixels. And now we can then learn this mapping where we try to make as uh, make the reconstruction ever as small as possible. So why will this actually give anything useful? Yeah, okay, I should also say that instead of having a linear model we had before, we can apply uh, our favorite uh, nonlinear uh, neural network model here. So why is this actually uh, useful? This is uh, uh, described in this paper by Along and uh, Benjo. Uh, so you should imagine now that our data actually, kind of the true data, the X data, is lying on some manifold in this uh, two-dimensional space. So when we add noise, we remove points away from the manifold. And now what the autoencoder will learn, because it, le it has to learn to reconstruct the uncorrupted image, is it will learn to take a point that lies outside the spiral and move it closer to the spiral, right? So that means it, it uh, the autoencoder will, will try to put things back on the data manifold. And in that way, it actually has learned a lot about what manifold the data actually lies on. And, and uh, this, is, this is similar to learning about the distribution of the data as we wanted to do in the, in the unsupervised learning case. So let's compare the MNIST features we learned uh, in, in the purely supervised learning by, by this unsupervised learning approach. And one thing that uh, you should recognize here as we have learned about this in the, in the convolutional uh, session is that we, when we do that, we get these images to the right and you can see they look similar to these filters that we learned, uh, we, we learned and we believe uh, are are very good as having as the filters in the first layers of a neural network. Of course, there's also other things, but but these sparse edge detector type filters uh, is a signature of something we like. It's an ability to find parts in images. So this also hints that it might be a good idea to use these autoencoders as a way to pre-train a supervised model.